Hey everybody, I'm here with Shannon from the Black Dahlia Murder. How's it going, man? It's pretty good. It's cold, but all right. So I was wondering how the tour is going so far. I imagine it's a little bit different. I heard um, your guitarist John dropped out halfway through the tour, and so I guess as difficult as that is, being a five-piece and having a very complex music style, um, what were the obstacles, I guess, to be able to play live again? Well, actually, John, he left the fold three days before the tour started. Really? So we came out here knowing it was going to be a four-piece deal. We were like, you know, hey, we gotta go. We can't, we can't cancel this. We have to go. I mean, it's really not, it's not hard. I mean, I think anybody in a band that, that does it for a living should be able to, you know, play the songs by themselves, you know, without having everyone else there, you know. So I think that if you're if you're comfortable with doing that, then you know, mm -hmm. you'll be fine live. I guess when uh, fans listen to the songs live, they have certain expectations of how they sound off the album, and so I'm wondering how I guess you translated. Um, those guitar parts so that it would fill up and I guess um, not sound empty. Well, I mean, we uh, posted some stuff online uh, talking about you know him leaving the band and that we were going to come out as a four piece. You know, so I think a lot of kids were prepared like, okay, the the guy that does the solos isn't going to be there, so no solos. You know, that's an obvious one. Um, but I think I think they're they're okay with it. They're cool with just coming out and having a good time, anyways. I mean, it's not like it's not like we're coming out without a vocalist or without yeah. a drummer, you know, it's, so it's, you know, you can work with it. I mean, there's no harmonies, no guitar harmonies, no solos, mm -hmm. but all the essential stuff is still there, you know, and it still sounds tight and it still sounds heavy, so, That's great. you know, I think, I don't, I, so far, nobody's been bummed. All the kids have been really cool and supportive and, you know, that's uh, exactly what we needed, you know, in this, this kind of, you know, in this time. You know, we needed some love and support, and kids showed it. So, yeah, absolutely. Um, now there's a, an organization in Canada called Factor, and uh, what the government does, they give about I think 17 million dollars to Factor a year to give out to um, musicians, artists, that sort of thing, for various things. And I understand that in um, the U.S., you guys really don't have, I guess, that government support, that those grants and funding. And um, I guess when a band is starting out, it's really difficult. And so, do you think, in your opinion, that it's it'd be good to have government funding for a band in the sense that you'd be able, when you're starting out, to get like a $5,000 grant to get all your equipment, be able to head off on a tour? Or do you think maybe it's good to be able to have that struggle, that struggle so that you can, um, you, the only, the, I guess, the persistent get to the top before they get the support of a, um, a record label? Um, what are your feelings on that? Well, I, th I, th I personally think that the struggle is what builds character. I think it's what proves a band from another band. You know, there's there's a lot of bands that are out now that, you know, are fairly popular that got there because, you know, their their families or you know whoever have a lot of money. Yeah. And you know, hey, convenient for them, but there's a lot of bands out there who started with nothing and had to like, you know, do tons of touring that sucked and make no money and you know sh sell things to pay your rent and you know live on your friend's couch. You know, and that sucks, but at the same time, you know, um, it, it it really defines who you are, and it changes who you are. Like, when you, when you, you know, finally get to a level where you're, you're making ends meet and stuff, you know, you really appreciate it because you know what it was like. You know, like, I didn't have, you know, a government or some, you know, corporation of some sort or any sort of operation giving me money, you know. Like, my folks were my only support, you know, when I was younger, and then... You know, eventually it went on to where, you know, yeah, I did struggle and did shitty tours and lived on my friend's couch and I had nothing but, like, my laptop and a suitcase full of clothes. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I just think that's important. Mm -hmm. You know, I think it, it'll it'll really test bands and you'll know which bands are going to, like, stick it out and really do it because not everybody is cut out for touring, no matter how, how much they love mm -hmm. playing music. You know, like, there's a lot of bands out there that get to the point where they get signed by a label, they tour a couple times and they break up because it's just not something they can't do. You know, and I think going through the struggle will weed out those bands. And then the bands that make it are the bands that are, you know, will persevere. That's great. Do you so. think that, um, I guess, that struggle for yourself was the motivation that caused you, I guess, to be the best drummer you could be, in your opinion? Um, I don't know if it's the struggle, but I think, I think that's just like... Uh, a lot of musicians, you know, you're always striving to get better and be better, you know, and you, you watch other people play and you're inspired by them and, you know, you just want to take it to the next level. You want to, I mean, especially in this kind of music, you know, the uh, the limits are always being pushed so far, like, 
drummers are just getting faster and faster and the music's yeah. getting more technical and spastic and bizarre, <laughs> you know, and, and it's always like, you know, kind of like, what can I do now, you know, to really... Push do, the envelope? Yeah, either push the envelope or do something that stands out still, you know, whether it's extremely fast or not, you know. Um, so I don't think it's I don't think it's necessarily the struggle, but I mean it definitely pushes you to be a better band. Absolutely, and I think there's something to be said for the motivation for trying to push that envelope and trying to create something in a genre that I guess there's so many people and the fans of it are very um, critical. Yeah. Absolutely, and so but the thing that I found that was great, the general consensus about I guess the drumming on Nocturnal was that they were really pleased with it, fans. And it, I guess when a band um, changes members, a lot of the time the fans are very critical about who gets in, and it's almost like a very exclusive club to the fans. <laughs> and so I guess when you came in, I guess the, the fans accepted you. Was there a sense of relief for yourself, knowing that, okay, I've proved myself to the fans, and now I can kind of express myself in the way that I wanted? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I remember when I first joined the band, there was a bunch of kids, uh, you know, like on the drum drum forums online or whatever, you know, and they were just running their mouths like, oh man, I don't know about this kid, blah, 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 you know. Coming from the previous band I was in, because the band I was in before, like I said, didn't require that kind of drumming. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people were just like, oh, he can't play death metal, he can't, you know, play fast or whatever. And that's, that's not the case, because this is the kind of music that I love and, you know, like to play. It just so happens that I wasn't in this kind of band before this. Um, so there was, a, there was a, you know, a handful of kids that, you know, said some weird stuff online and then after the record came out and we toured one or two tours you know the kids were like okay I take that back mm -hmm. you know so that for That's me cool. was like nice to hear it was like well thanks you know like <laughs> thanks for taking it back you know it's definitely like a you have to go prove yourself kind of thing you know because um, they kind of always had decent you know, good drummers you know Black Dollars always had good drummers in the past and I think I think the fans were like let's just they need to get a good drummer and they need to keep it you know, and so it was like proving yourself as a, you know, a good enough drummer to them was the first thing, and then sticking around was the second thing, yeah. so, so yeah, it was definitely a big relief. That's great, and so I'm wondering whether, like, the internet, I guess it's naive not to say that the internet really controls a lot of, I guess, music nowadays, and the popularity of what's, what's hot and what's not, and so, but the thing is that it's, it's a double-edged sword, it's bittersweet, because it can, it can be used to promote some great music and great things, but then the fans who, because they're behind their like computers and they aren't like in front of the actual artist, they say things that like wouldn't actually, they would never say in real life. Yes. And so I want to, from your perspective of being in that band and being in, I guess, in that transparent bubble where you can see out, but a lot of people think, I guess, have the idea that they, you guys can't. And so they're very critical. How is that, com like, for your sense, like with you're saying, like on the drum forums, people would say really nasty things. Mm. Like how I guess, I guess how does that affect the dynamic of the band? I mean, it doesn't really affect the band. It's, I mean, it's one of those things. Like, there's always going to be a critic. There's always going to be some like some kid who hates his life and just wants <laughs> to like you know drag other people down. And it's just mm -hmm. like you can't let yourself you know get caught up on that kind of stuff. You know, like you can't. You can't pay attention to it because there's always going to be some naysayer. There's always going to be some punk kid who you know thinks he's the best thing that's ever happened to the planet mm -hmm. Earth, and you know uh, whatever it is, what it is. I mean, he just looks like a, like an ass to everyone else. You know? <laughs> that's true. Like, you know, that's fine. You know, I don't I don't expect everyone to like what we do or necessarily mm -hmm. like my drumming. That's that's fine. It's everyone's got a different preference, you know, Absolutely. and they're entitled to it. I mean, I think I think sometimes people should shut their mouth, but with the internet, you know, you can run your mouth all you want, and you know, you can hide in your basement. That's <laughs> yeah, true. that's true. And that's whatever you want to you want to be that kid, then that's fine. You know, mm -hmm. I just think it's a uh, it's pretty childish, but you know, it's one of those things. You know, you always gotta like just appreciate who does appreciate you, mm -hmm. and just ignore those people that just want to you know tear the world down. <laughs> that's great. That's so. great. Um, now, I understand, like, the band is really known for, I guess, its lyrics and the subjects that it talks about, and I remember what, kind of when the, the screaming genre really became mainstream, a lot of people were like, well, we have no idea what they're saying, <laughs> but now it's become very, like, um, a normal for mm -hmm. someone to go into the lyrics and find out what the people say and pursue um, the actual words behind the screams, and so how important, I guess, for, as a band, it is to have subjects that it expresses. 
Uh, it's, it's very important. I mean, I think I think uh, Trevor enunciates his words pretty well. Mm -hmm. Like I could actually listen to some of the songs and figure out some of the stuff without yeah. having to actually look it up. But um, yeah, a lot of people look through lyrics, you know, and it's important because if you're singing about something stupid, <laughs> they're gonna know, and it, it really takes away from the song. It takes away from the vibe of everything, and then it, you just you're stuck with this thought in your head of wow, this song is about something really stupid. Mm -hmm. You know, exactly. like I mean, I, there there are bands that I've heard before. I thought the music was amazing, and as soon as I read the lyrics, I just got bummed out. I was like, "This is really? dumb." Yeah, you know, like, <laughs> like I can't yeah. get into anything he's singing about because it's just it's badly written. You know, um, I don't, it's very important. It's very important. I mean, because I mean, if you're if you're telling a story or whatever, it has to be interesting. That's true. <laughs> That's true. And I think like after a while, the streaming <coughs> like I guess mainstream. Um, Parents, um, it takes a really keen ear to learn, I guess, what people are actually screaming. Because when I started out listening to that sort of music, I had no idea what they're saying. Mm -hmm. But after a while, you kind of pick up certain things and, uh, I guess, learn to understand it. Absolutely. Well, anyways, thanks so much, and I had a really great time talking with you, and uh, hope we can talk again soon. Cool. Thanks. Thanks.